Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to give you an explanation of what tax code to use when you are coding your transactions in QuickBooks for GST. So if we go have a look at the bank transactions page, we will scroll down and first we will look at an expense here. So I'll click on here. And when you are entering an expense, this is like a spend money transaction that you would do in Myob or Zero, a similar thing. You have to enter a GST code. So we select here and it brings a list of options. So which one is the correct one to use in various circumstances? So GST on non-capital 10%. Basically capital would be regarded as an asset, like a fixed asset something that's usually costs over a thousand dollars it might be a motor vehicle it might be a piece of machinery it might be a piece of property so when it says gst on non-capital here we are talking about regular expenses so this item here was for three thousand four hundred dollars if this was a piece of machinery being $3,400 over a thousand, I would normally put this to a capital account, but we can see here, Air Express Air. It looks like airfares. In this case here, we would need to find out this airfare, Air Express Air, is this a domestic airfare or an international airfare? Because if it's domestic, there will be GST. If it's international, there will not be GST. So if this was a domestic airfare, we would put it to GST on non-capital 10%. And we've got the prompt here asking us whether we want to set this tax code as a default for this expense type. I'm going to say no, because as I said, airfares can either be GST or GST free, depending on whether it's domestic or international. Now, if it was international, it would still be non-capital because it's not a fixed asset. It's not a piece of machinery or anything like that. All it is, is a general expense for airfares, but because it's international, it will be GST free. So anything that is a regular expense that is GST free would be GST free on non-capital. Anything that is a regular expense that is GST would be GST on non-capital. Now, if this three and a half thousand dollars was not for airfares, but was, uh, let's say a piece of machinery, a capital expense, and if it was bought from a business that is registered for GST and has invoiced you for, for GST, it would be GST on capital 10%. Now, if it was a private purchase, if it was a secondhand purchase from a private seller, uh, like some guy is selling an old piece of equipment that he's had out in his back shed and you've bought it for your business, being a private seller, he would not be registered for GST and it would be GST free capital if it was an asset and no GST. And the last item here, input tax generally refers to interest expenses in this case. And there's no GST on interest. So that would be, so if this was a, an interest payment on a car loan, for example, you'd put it as input tax 0%. So you've got two capital options for assets. And then you've got non-capital for regular expenses, which could be anything such as airfares, uh, fuel, contractor fees, most kinds of expenses will be non-capital. Unless it is a larger asset purchase, then it will be capital. All right, let's have a look at some sales now. We can see here the list is a bit longer. That's because it is giving us the options for the purchase GST types as well, which we've already spoken about. Now for a regular sales type, we won't be using these. What we may be using is GST free 0% sales. This would be for a non-GST item. For example, if you are providing a service for a sale that doesn't attract GST, it might be for health services or, or for training. If there's no GST on that, that would be GST free. An input tax, 0%, that would be interest income. Just like purchases, there's no GST on interest. So if this is bank interest that you've earned from your saver account, that would be 0% input tax. Now, if you are invoicing an overseas customer, because they're outside of Australia, they're not part of the GST system, you would put that as a GST free export at 0%. But for all regular domestic sales for GST items, 
which is most things. If you're a consultant, for example, or if you're selling products in Australia that are GST applicable, then you would put that for GST 10% on sales. So just to recap, on the sales side of things, you have GST free, regular 0%. You have GST for your 10%, which will be most things for most businesses. If it's an export sale, an overseas customer, 0%. And if it is bank interest, input tax, that would be 0% as well. A couple of examples for GST free sales might be health services, if you're in the health sector, training services, if you provide certificates for training courses, education services can be GST free. But most things for most businesses will tend to be GST, if you are registered for GST that is. You can only invoice GST if you are registered for GST. All right, guys, I hope that cleared a few things up. If you've got any questions, hit us up in the comments or send us an email. Or if you want to learn more about accounting in QuickBooks, head over to our website, qtraining.net.au. You can book in a training session there. We work with multiple accounting software programs. We also are rolling out some on-demand online courses. But that's it for the video. Enjoy your bookkeeping. We'll catch you later.